A breaking news right now on CBS 2 News at 5 o'clock. An arrest and the death of this 10-year-old Lancaster boy. And now Juan Fernandez is live in the newsroom with this breaking story. Juan, who's been arrested? Well, Pat, Jeff, uh, we are told the man arrested is the boyfriend of little Anthony Avalos's mom. Take a look at this. L.A. County deputies tell us this is Kareem Leva. He's been booked on suspicion of murder. Anthony Avalos died one week ago today. His mom called 911 to report that he had fallen inside their Lancaster home. Well, doctors later said Anthony's injuries were not consistent with the fall and that the child showed signs of abuse. And as we reported this week, the Department of Children and Family Services received more than a dozen calls about potential abuse of Anthony over the years. Yesterday, we reported that Anthony may have come out as gay shortly before his death. Now, we are expecting to get more answers in just a little bit about the arrest when deputies hold the news conference at 530. And we'll bring that to you live right here on CBS2 when it happens. For now, Pat and Jeff, I'll send it back to you. All right, thank you for that, Juan. And we have more breaking news. A 77-year-old man has been officially charged with the murder of Long Beach Fire Captain Dave Rosa. But the story behind the shooting is changing. Uh, Chris Holmstrom, uh, we understand that there are questions initially about whether this may have been an ambush or not, but investigators now say that's not what this was, right? Yeah, that's right. And tonight we're learning that this deadly shooting is being investigated as a dispute between that 77-year-old suspect and one of his neighbors. 77-year-old Thomas Kim facing several charges, including murder and the death of Long Beach Fire Captain Dave Rosa. It happened early Monday morning. Prosecutors say Kim shot Rosa at a facility for low-income seniors as Rosa and other firefighters responded to an explosion and fire. They say Kim set off the blast in his apartment to try and kill a woman who lived above him and whom he had a feud with. A neighbor we spoke with say there were red flags, but they were out of character for him. But I do know that he was upset with the lady above him. He was saying that she was making noise in the, in, in the night, and they would, he would call the police and have the police go up there. Sue Windmiller Smith told us she never heard any noise coming from that apartment. As for the explosion, police believe it was a murder suicide attempt. Another firefighter and a civilian were also shot, but their injuries were not life threatening. Kim is facing the following charges murder with special circumstances, attempted murder of a firefighter, two counts of attempted murder, arson, and explosion with intent to murder. And the LA County DA's office will decide later whether or not to pursue the death penalty. As for Captain Rosa's family, a GoFundMe account has been set up by the Long Beach Fire Department. If you want to donate and help out that family, we have all that information on CBSLA.com. We'll send it back to you in the studio. All right, thank you for that, Chris. Now to the seismic shakeup on the Supreme Court. Justice Anthony Kennedy, the swing vote, sometimes conservative, sometimes moderate, is retiring. Now, Kennedy is from California and has been a key vote on abortion, affirmative action, campaign finance, and the Citizens United case, gay rights, guns, and voting rights. Appointed by President Reagan, Kennedy has been a Supreme Court judge since 1988. His retirement opens up a lifetime appointment to the country's highest court. Well, this will allow President Trump to reshape the court and American legal precedent for decades to come. And our Lisa Siegel spoke with a local law professor who clerked for Justice Kennedy. Lisa, he's predicting some, some major rulings will be overturned, huh? Yeah, well, he is predicting a lot. He says, of course, the Supreme Court can obviously, you know, surprise him, but that's what he's saying. Justice Kennedy announced his retirement just a day before his 82nd birthday. He says it's to spend more time with his family, but the decision has sent shockwaves through Capitol Hill and across the nation. The whole object of the judiciary is to ensure stability, continuity. And so we pride ourselves on the fact that there's little change. In a move that some experts believe will set in motion a seismic shift to the right on the highest court in the land, 81-year-old Justice Anthony Kennedy is retiring after more than 30 years on the bench. He sided with both liberals and conservatives, earning him the reputation as the court's swing vote. The, the, the cases swing, I don't. Kennedy, a moderate conservative, was seen as a consensus pick when President Ronald Reagan nominated him in 1987. It's popular with colleagues of all political persuasions. On the Second Amendment, prisoners' rights, and the constitutionality of Obamacare, he sided with conservatives. But on other issues... He would side with liberals on those big social issues that people care about, whether it was abortion, affirmative action, or gay rights. 
Sam Ehrman, a USC constitutional law professor who clerked for Kennedy, says with the president's first Supreme Court pick already in place, his next is likely to be an even more staunch conservative. And many of the court's past close rulings, which swung 5-4 because of Kennedy, will now be revisited. My prediction is there will soon be a majority to severely undermine or reverse uh, Roe versus Wade. There will soon be a majority to curtail or end affirmative action. And the majority that had existed in favor of gay rights will now disappear. And that the extension of same-sex marriage to other spheres, like discrimination employment, um, will not be a clear-cut path. Ehrman says there can always be surprises when it comes to the nation's highest court, but he believes the coming change will shape decisions for years to come. This has been something that the conservative legal movement has been aiming to accomplish for decades. President Trump says he will nominate Kennedy's successor from a list of 25 names that he made public during the campaign. Pat and Jeff. Back to you. Lisa, thank you so much. Well, with Justice Kennedy's retirement now, President Trump will be putting his second justice on the Supreme Court in as many years. And it was clear today that he knows how monumental this is. The selection of a justice of the United States Supreme Court is considered, I think we can all say, one of the, one of the most important events. Some people think outside of, obviously, war and peace, it's the most, most important thing that you can have. That's the president of Portugal on the left there. Now, President Trump says that he will move very quickly to nominate Justice Kennedy's replacement. And Majority Leader Mitch McConnell says the Senate will vote to confirm the nominee this fall. Well, Democrats are hoping to call on McConnell to delay that vote until after the midterm elections. But CBS News Chief Legal Correspondent Jan Crawford says Democrats have a small chance of making that happen. In many ways, Democrats made one of the biggest political blunders in modern history by trying to filibuster Justice Neil Gorsuch last year, who, of course, was nominated to replace the conservative Justice Scalia. Uh, Republicans then invoked what's called the nuclear option, did away with filibusters for the Supreme Court, which means it will be very difficult for Democrats to stop President Trump's nominee for this position. Well, there, of course, be much more on the retirement of Justice Anthony Kennedy and who might be nominated to replace him coming up on the CBS Evening News with Jeff Glor. And coming up in minutes, we'll have much more on today's Supreme Court decision against unions and their funding. Kennedy sided with the conservative members of the court on this ruling. We do have some breaking news at this hour. The Health and Human Services Inspector General is now investigating conditions at shelters for immigrant children. That review comes after claims that some children at a shelter in Virginia were abused. Approximately 12,000 illegal immigrant children are now being housed in the U.S. Around 2,500 of them were separated from their parents at the border. And yesterday, a federal judge in San Diego ordered the Trump, Trump administration rather, to reunite those children with their families within 30 days. A witness captured these images of a three-alarm fire at a Huntington Beach warehouse this morning. Firefighters got the call just before 10.30 to rush to the Sports Solutions building on Chemical Lane. Now, they couldn't enter the building because part of the mezzanine collapsed, so they fought it from the outside. They put it out just before noon. One person was hurt. Investigators are looking into the cause. A police used a flashbang grenade to end a five-hour-long standoff inside of a Sherman Oaks motel room today. Motel on Sepulveda Boulevard was evacuated overnight after investigators say an armed man robbed a female guest. I accidentally talked to the wrong person, asked for the lighter, and, like, literally got robbed. Eventually, the suspect gave up and was taken into custody. A shirtless protester stopped traffic in the heart of downtown Los Angeles today. Well, the man climbed onto a freeway sign on the 110 freeway. CHP then shut down that freeway just south of the 101 near 3rd Street while they dealt with the man. Well, the man held up one sign that said Deaf Free, which is the name of a singer. Another sign was about pollution, we're told. And after dancing on the sign, taunting police and causing traffic chaos for more than an hour, well, the man did a backflip onto an airbag set up by fire crews. He was then taken into custody and the freeway reopened. California will officially stay open for business for the next fiscal year. Governor Brown signed his last state budget in downtown L.A. this morning. The $139 billion spending bill will use money from California's massive surplus 
to help address the housing crisis, pour money into social services, and sock away billions for a rainy day. We are a, a very large and uh, wealthy state, and we need to do things, and we can do things. And that's what this budget does. Brown leaves office early next year after serving a record four terms. Well, the patriarch of the Jackson family loses his fight with cancer. Details on the life and death of Joe Jackson are straight ahead here at 5. It's more than enough to have to deal with things like this on top of it. And two on your side gets results for a single mother whose car was damaged by a deputy. Oh, yeah, they're the happiest soccer fans you'll ever see, whose team just lost. Mexico loses, but still wins at the World Cup. Yeah, how about my team South Korea did well today as well. Coming up, everybody, the weather, it's on the way.